Hey there, Ken Kasha here. Today I'd like to offer you a training video with some very practical tips to help you create a daily meditation practice that allows you to bring out your best self in all that you do and gain a high level of mastery. So right up front, let's face it, mastery with anything requires knowledge, training, implementation of what you know, you know, living it, Repetition is how we create new neural patterns and how we make it permanent. And then, of course, continuing study with that. So bring this to your attention. And I want to offer you a framework, if you will, of something I use myself and I highly recommend to get the most. So before I do, let's just admit to each other that when, if you're first starting out, for example, it can be very challenging establishing a new pattern, a new behavior, even though it's in your best interest, especially when it comes to meditation. I can still remember when I first did the Silver Method way back in 1971, it was not part of my practice, it was not part of my life, it was so new to me that I found that I almost had to force myself. And in the morning, I'm attempting to do my alpha meditation, as we call it, and I, I was restless. I just wanted to open my eyes. I, I felt like I was in a rush. And I don't recall exactly how long, but it took some time for me to get used to that. I also found that there were times when I made excuses. Oh, I was so busy. I had so much to do with this. And that's what it really is, is an excuse. Can you relate with that? So if you're already a Silver Method practitioner and you've done the training, this is especially for you. If you're new to Silva, maybe only read the book, done some home studies, this will also serve you. And if you're just using any meditation practice, again, it can be of help to you. Just there's some common universal principles here. So first step would be, why is it important to you to have a daily meditation practice? I'm sure you've come to notice that in the recent years, so many high-level successful people in just about every industry, from the arts, from science, from business, from tech, you name it, are coming out of the woodwork, so to speak, talking more openly about the meditation practice. Because the research is there. And um, if you're watching this video, I'm sure you've seen so much of the research. It's important though for you to just stop right now and assess why is this important to you? How will it serve you? So for example, we know that when we have a daily meditation practice, it helps us to have a better quality of health. It helps the body to get into homeostasis, into balance, which helps support the immune system and helps us to defend against illness, viruses, germs, infection, etc. And if we do succumb to any kind of cold, the virus, etc., we will tend to what? Recover more quickly, more easily. I see this all the time in my classes. People come in, we do a four-day immersion of Silver Life and Intuition System. If you're not aware, since 2007, that is what we used to call the basic lecture series and a whole lot more with some of Mr. Jose Silva, the creator, the founder's advanced material to ramp it up and make it more relevant for the present times. And in that, in, 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 in doing this, in the life and intuition system, as we go through the four days, people will report as we move through, especially into day two, day three, you know, for the past couple of years, I've been lucky to get four hours of sleep. In fact, I'm lucky if I sleep that long or I have trouble getting back to sleep. It's one of the most common benefits I hear that people just from having two, three days of concentration, of practicing, because we practice a lot with the guided dynamic meditations. They say, for the first time last night, I slept through without interruption four hours, which is still not enough, but it makes a big difference. And it gets better. To people who said, I usually have trouble getting back to sleep, now I am. It's also very common for people to come into the training with pain, aches and pains, living with chronic pain. And as we move through the training, into through day one, especially now into day two, day three, they're noticing the pain is subsiding, 10, 20, 50%, oftentimes 100% by the time we finish. It's not magic and it's not a quick fix, but we know fact, when our body is in balance and homeostasis, 
the body has infinite wisdom to heal itself. We have an incredible thing called the human body, biological intelligence. And so much of it is on automatic. It's just that we've kind of gotten in the way. We've created obstacles. We've interfered because we live in survival so much. We live in, 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 in full of anger and upset and distress. And the body gets flooded with cortisol and other hormones, stress hormones. And when that happens, we go into survival mode and it throws everything out of balance. So my friends, have you noticed? When you're preoccupied, stressed, under those conditions, look back. Aren't they the times when you're more likely to make a mistake? Have you noticed under those moments when you're preoccupied, emotionally upset, not centered, you're more likely to what? Have an accident. Past couple of weeks have been very stressful perhaps, and then you come down with the cold, the virus. There's germs all around all the time. But our body takes care of us and fights it off as long as we don't interfere and we stay in balance. You'll also find people say, oh, I'm so busy, Ken, I'm so busy. I have such a busy schedule and wind up putting it off. Can you relate? Guaranteed, you make the time and follow this daily meditation, simple practice, and you will actually get more done in less time. And you'll be more productive in shorter periods of time. You get the idea? Again, think of the benefits. What also I experienced, one of the things I, I love, when we finished the four-day immersion, one of the bonuses I offer to you as one of my students is you get me with this and you have access to me, not an AI robot, not uh, email, well, you can email, but you have access to ask me questions to help guide you. One of them is a one-on-one -on -one coaching call, complimentary for 30 minutes to make sure there's still no questions. And I love doing it, although it takes up a lot of my time I love doing it because every time I'm talking to the participants, they're telling me, oh my God, Ken, since I last saw you, let's say Sunday, and now it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or even the week later, I had money owed me, an uncollected debt, and all of a sudden I got it. And I had been trying and trying, or I had all these meaningful synchronicities. Or I've been sending out resumes, resumes, nobody's answering. All of a sudden, I'm getting answers. Again, it's not magic. When we are clear about our intention, when we clear our path, so to speak, and stay centered, it's almost like we become mentally magnetic, if you will, and we attract more good. Have you noticed? When you're centered and you're balanced, you seem to experience as if the universe has got your back. You get into that flow state, far from being perfect. I mean, I could go on and on. I want you to make an assessment and be honest with yourself and notice the difference when you take the time in how you feel. All the research for the past 60 years or more has taught us that when people regularly meditate, they age more gracefully. They can normalize blood pressure, heart rate, cholesterol levels, even blood sugar levels. I'm not your doctor, I don't pretend to be a doctor, and I'm not prescribing. This is not my opinion. All the research is there, and it's been there for a long time. So I start this way because I think the only way that you or I will ever establish a new habit pattern like this, especially when it's new to us, is we've got to have a lot of value attached to it. We've got to assign meaning to it. There's got to be a reason, a big reason, why we want to do this. Because by default, it's too easy to slip into old patterns. It's the way we are wired biologically and neurologically. It's, do the research. It's much easier to be negative, can you believe that, than it is to be positive. And to establish a new pattern so that it becomes permanent, it takes repetition. I always remind my students, you know, I'm very transparent. I tell the truth, that's my reputation. 53 years, coming up soon, I'm celebrating my 53rd year doing this. It works, it's amazing, it's awesome, as long as you want. Do the work, and you make the time. So let's get busy, and I want you to take some notes. And if you have to pause for a moment, if I'm talking too fast, just pause the video and take some good notes about this. First step, what is the best time to begin your daily meditation? Best time of the day would be in the morning. It's called owning your morning, taking command of your life. 
not going to your phone, not going to the TV, not going to the news, not even having a cup of coffee. Take care of whatever you need biologically, business-wise, you know what I mean. Drink some water, stretch, and I recommend get out of the bed. Sit in a chair. And 15 minutes would be ideal. 13 to 15 minutes, you can go as long as you like. Even five minutes works. But the reason why I say 15 minutes would be ideal because it takes a good 13 minutes for the body to get into homeostasis, to get into the zone, so to speak. That's again based on brain scans, you know, science. Way back when Dr. Herb Benson did his work with the relaxation response at Harvard, the thought was at least 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Not so. So again, that's up to you. But in the morning, as you do that, begin with three very slow, deep cleansing belly breaths. Again, if you're a silver practitioner, you've got really quick entries that you spent four days developing. We call it the three to one method. Use that, work with that, and incorporate, make sure that your breathing is slow and deep. And then once you get into that state, it's kind of like saying, bingo, I'm at my level, whatever that means. You've got to avoid analyzing questioning. Am I deep enough? Is it working? Well, as soon as you do that, you're out of it. So that it's an art of surrender where you just kind of take it for granted and have some trust in the process. Millions and millions of people throughout this globe have gone through the Silver Method since 1966. We're the most copied, most imitated program out there. So we know that it works. The evidence is there. You've just got to discover this for yourself and make it a reality day in and day out. So once you do that, feel some gratitude. I'm adding that in a piece. may not have been in your original instruction, but just think of anyone or anything whom you're happy is in your life. Think of any opportunity that you're happy is available to you. And the more emotion that you can feel, the more positive emotion you can feel, the better. It puts you into a state. It literally changes your state of being to shift you if you've been pessimistic or you know down in the dumps to a more optimistic more hopeful state and the fact remains all the research shows when we're in an optimistic state we have more access to our higher thinking functions and we're more likely to experience intuitive insights synchronicities we're more in what the flow state that wonderful again research it this it's incredible time to be alive there's so much going on out there. Then, just maybe 30 seconds a minute, however long you want, but not just quick, you know, two seconds, at least 30 seconds to a minute, and you don't need to time it. You'll know. Then, what are your activities for the day? And what are your goals? Be clear about your intention for the day. So perhaps it's a day off and you're going to be with friends. Perhaps it's a day off and you're driving to the beach. Perhaps it's a work day and you have meeting after meeting, client after client, phone call after phone call. You get the idea? Whatever your activities are for the day, professionally or personally, just do some mental rehearsal. Again, if you're a Silver Method trained practitioner and you know this technique, use Mirror the Mind. It's the most, it's the most awesome, ultimate, I call, self-improvement technique. Just like athletes do. We've had our share of Olympic athletes. We've had our share of high-level, successful people, business owners, CEOs. Uh, Dr. Armin Bose, you know, Bose fame, way back when I was in Boston, took silver. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a success story in many ways for the Silver Method because for over a year and a half, my mentor was going there at the facility offering training. There have been countless organizations like that who have championed the Silver Method more for the tools. All we are is a system of tools. You've got this ability already. You've got incredible ability. What Silver did, Mr. Silver, he put together step-by-step -step procedure. He studied for 22 years and he looked for age-old principles. He looked for universal principles. He looked for common denominators in hypnosis and meditation, in wisdom schools, in psychology, in biofeedback at the time. That was the science, the brain science of the time and he put together what we call the Silver Program. So you're mentally rehearsing. So you're in a state, when you achieve that state, you're in a hyper 
learning state, a super learning state, where you learn so much faster, you absorb, and you're more impressionable. And that is a fact. You are getting into a state like a young child before they reach puberty, where you learn so much faster. So you're mentally rehearsing positive outcomes, depending on what your intentions are, your goals for the day. Get the idea? Then, as you move through the day, again, I know you've got a busy schedule, you're on the go a lot. However, we call them alpha breaks. I highly recommend you do this, I'd love to hear from you. And in between, when it's appropriate and the time is there, you only need at least three minutes, up to five minutes, in between important meetings, in between important clients, in between important phone calls, in between important courses, things you know that you're studying. Take what some people have called, not silver instructors, but I've heard others call them transition meditations. We call them alpha breaks, where you close your eyes, three slow deep breaths, again use the three to one method, or just the three deep breaths, feel some appreciation, some gratitude, and what's your intention for the next activity. Even though you did it in the morning, you're reinforcing that positive outcome. And you can also give yourself a suggestion that you stay calm, you'll stay focused, you'll, you'll be compassionate, whatever's appropriate, and you'll be at your best. And you're imagining that you're of service to your client, to your customer, you're at your best, they're thanking you, they're, they're expressing the benefits because of the service you've rendered to them. Again, get the idea? Then. Just give yourself a suggestion that you're going to count out one to five or one to three, and you're going to open your eyes feeling great, feeling better than before. Or just open your eyes and tell yourself before you open your eyes, you're going to feel fantastic, feel much better than before. Do that as often as you can, and especially when you complete your day of work and you're now going to be with your children, with your family, with your spouse, with your friend, or you're going to the theater, or you're going to dinner with it could be a business meeting or personal. Sit in your car, wherever you are, before you go to this new event, or especially with your family. Eyes closed. Transition meditation, alpha break, three slow deep breaths. Feel some gratitude. And what's your intention? Be clear about your goal. I want to be fully present with my family. I want to enjoy their company. So that we're not, we're kind of clearing the air, letting go of some of the distress of the day. Come on, we've all been there. Have you? How many times have you been with somebody you really care about and you're feeling so preoccupied, so distracted that you're kind of not there? And it's really a shame when we do that to those we love. So it's a proven strategy. It is a high-performance strategy that I'm told thousands and thousands of people have been tested and they found you do this and your performance will amplify. Then the end of the day. I mean, there's so much more you could do. The end of the day. You could do it in bed. <laughs> Can you relate to this? I find when I do it in bed, I fall asleep way too quickly. And I don't get done. I wake up at four in the morning, let's say, and then I go, oh, I didn't finish, and then I finish. So you'd be better off to sit in a chair or sit up in the bed, something like that. And again, three slow deep breaths. If you're the type that you get into sleep pretty quickly, you might want to do this very fast because you don't want to go off to sleep. Three slow deep breaths, again three to a method, and then feel some gratitude briefly for the day and count your blessings. Anything that you nailed, yes, congratulate yourself. Maybe you only made a little bit of progress, yay, I made some progress. Maybe you had a goal to make ten successful phone calls and you only made seven or five, yay. You did something. Celebrate it. And some would say, we don't really learn from our successes. When we learn are from our so-called mishaps, when we fall short of the mark, so-called failure. It's really not a failure unless we don't learn the lesson. So you want to reflect also and review any mishap, any mistake, any shortcoming. And ask, what can I learn from this? How can I do it better? Get the idea? So you're paying attention, you're telling the truth. And once you do that, forgive yourself. Be compassionate. Forgive yourself. 
and recognize your fellow human being. And that's why I say that to me. I give myself permission not to be perfect. It sounds silly. It sounds contrite. And you know what? It works. It's sound advice. I'm not a therapist. I'm a psychologist. But I'm sure any therapist would agree. Tell the truth. Learn from the mistake. Forgive yourself. And then, in your imagination, go back in your timeline, so to speak, back to you know, the time of the event, the mishap, or the mistake. As if you're there. As if you're there. Not to relive it. You've, you're acknowledging it. What can I learn from this? How can I do better? And then as if you were a movie director, cancel it out. Cut. And redo the scene. So a simple one. If you were in a restaurant and you were very impatient with the waiter or waitress and not giving them a break because they were very slow and not paying attention that they were swamped and they're short of help, which is common battle cry these days, just forgive yourself. And then how would you do it better? And you'd imagine, you'd see yourself, you'd visualize yourself, you'd think of yourself being more patient, being more compassionate, expressing yourself in a more positive way, in a more compassionate way. And you go to sleep with your last thoughts being of you as if, you're, as if your best self has emerged. So my friends, think for a moment. When we go to sleep and we shut on ourselves and we go over the mistakes, oh God, I can't believe I did it again. And even during the day, what you don't realize is you're inadvertently mentally rehearsing, giving attention and energy to what you don't want. You're reinforcing it through repetition. And then you go to sleep and your subconscious goes to work reinforcing it. So you do need to acknowledge it, not make it worse, and let it go, release it, and let your last thoughts be as if your best self did emerge and you excelled, you succeeded, whatever's appropriate. You get the idea? And then just maybe add a simple thought, and tonight I'm going to have a wonderful, healthy night's rest and wake up in the morning feeling better than before. So earlier I called it owning the morning. It's really about owning your day. The theme I like to throw through the immersion of silver life and intuition system is we're here to take each of us to take command of our lives, to think for ourselves. Way back when, when Mr. Silver, I was working so closely with him. I'm the guy, I was blessed and fortunate. I was actually certified by him. I was still a full-time student at Boston University, but I was doing a lot of work in New York and in Boston and in Rhode Island with the people who really put the Silver Method on the map. I was so fortunate to have these men and women to be my mentors, in addition to Nell the Sheets and Harriet and I, and Jose, and apparently they saw in me, and Jose certified me. I started teaching while I was a full-time student working with that. And we called it silver mind control. <laughs> and he always meant controlling your own mind, your own self-mind control, thinking for ourselves, not being easily manipulated by the fear mongers or misinformation. Just because it's on the internet or it's in writing doesn't mean it's true. Do your due diligence for that. And that's one of the reasons the primary interest of Silva is, yes, take command of your life so you navigate with more grace, more ease, and in flow. And our unique contribution is, in addition to all the self-improvement and the benefits from meditation, is to develop your God-given intuitive capability so that you have a high level of mastery and you know the difference between when you can trust it and when it's just wishful thinking or distortion due to fear. And when you've got that in place, and it doesn't take long, it does take practice, and we practice quite a bit in the class, that's something you'll never get from the home studies, I'm sorry to say. They're pretty good, the home studies and the pre-recorded videos and you know having a Q&A with somebody in a breakout session or however they're doing it where there's a lot of people. The key is actually doing it. That's the big distinction of doing it live. In person is best, virtual live with an instructor guiding you, and you're actually doing the exercises and getting deliberate, well, it's called deliberate practice. You're getting immediate feedback. And we call them case studies, you know, working with the intuition. It's a tremendous confidence builder, and it will change your limiting beliefs about yourself. And when people leave, we say, welcome to the next phase of human evolution on the planet. You're never the same. 
you see things differently. Your filters, so to speak, are more hopeful, more optimistic, more positive. And we all leave saying, oh my gosh, if I could do what I just did repeatedly in the class on the last day, everything else seems so elementary. So my friends, I hope you find this helpful. My name is Ken Kasher. I'm the lead instructor, the training director. I'm the guy who Jose asked in 1984 to lead the charge with advanced training. I do the civil mastery. I work with instructors to help them. And more importantly, I'm here going into my 53rd year because of people like you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for sharing. If you find this helpful, please share it with others. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel or my blog, on my website, Silver Method of Connecticut. Please do, I'd love to meet you and one day have you in class. It's a, it really is, it's just, I couldn't say enough about the class. It's phenomenal and why I continue to offer it because we're transforming our lives. We're transforming the lives of people, one person at a time, so to speak, and that's how you change the world. So remember, you're far, far more and greater than you realize.